G'day Diver fans, Ben here from Built to Fish TV and welcome to my Angler Talk which is on a subject very dear to my heart, West Coast Snapper Fishing and I thought what more appropriate way than to answer your questions than to come out to my beloved West Coast, go do some snapper fishing and answer a few of your questions along the way. So let's get out there, get into it, this should be fun. <laughs> now the first question I've been asked it's by someone who said they've always wanted to try fishing the west coast but they're really nervous about bar crossings and they're wondering if I had any tips I could offer. It's a good thing to be nervous about bar crossings, they definitely deserve respect but once you work them out and take the right safety precautions they, they can be very manageable. The first thing I'd recommend is doing a Coast Guard New Zealand bar crossing course. They regularly run fantastic bar crossing courses in some of New Zealand's main centres and they'll teach you the fundamentals around the skills you need to develop to cross a bar, the safety procedures you need to follow when you're crossing a bar and they might even be holding one at the bar you want to be crossing in which case they'll give you very personalised information about how to cross a bar. But there's some key rules you should always follow when you're crossing a bar. The first thing you should always do is log a bar crossing trip report with Coast Guard New Zealand on the appropriate VHF channel, and I'll do that right now. Coast Guard Radio, Coast Guard Radio, this is Zulu Mike Tango 4899, a heavy metal, you got a copy over? Heavy metal, Coast Guard Radio, go ahead over. Yeah, afternoon Coast Guard, we're one POB, just exiting Carthia Harbour over the main bar, I'll give you a call when we're safe on the outside, over. So we've logged our trip report. The other thing, of course, you should always check before you cross a bar is the sea and weather conditions. When you're getting used to crossing a bar for the first time, you really want as little swell as possible and you want to be avoiding low tide and the, particularly the low outgoing tide. But having said that, every bar is different. So it's important to gather as much information as you can about the bar you intend to be crossing. Obviously once you've done your Coast Guard bar crossing course, a good source of information is some of the locals. There's also some golden rules around safety when you're crossing a bar. The first one goes without saying, but I'll repeat it anyway, everybody on the boat must be wearing a life jacket no matter how flat you think the bar is. They must fit right and everybody must know how to use them. That's extremely important. You also need at least two forms of communication. I've got my VHF radio, I've got another waterproof handheld VHF radio, I've got a Garmin inReach and I've got a waterproof cell phone along with a PLV mounted on my person and an EPIRB attached to the boat. So in the case of ending up in the water, I have a way of letting rescuers know where I am. As you can see, even on the calm days, you need to be careful on bars. As you can see, even on the calm days, you need to be careful on the bars, and every bar needs to be treated with respect. So I guess if I had to summarize, I'd say, everybody on the boat must be wearing life jackets, no matter how calm you might think the bar is. Do a Coast Guard New Zealand bar crossing course, That'll give you extremely valuable information and skills. Have all the necessary safety equipment on board and make sure you log a VHF trip report to open and close as you cross the bar. Very important to remember, lodge your trip report before you start your bar cross and close it once you've finished. All right team, first question done. Let's get out there and chase some West Coast snapper. So the next question I had was around Burley. And that's good timing because I'm actually getting ready to put some burley down. And while we're talking about burley on the west coast, I have a lot of people tell me that if you use burley out here, you're only going to attract sharks and you don't need it to catch snapper. The first thing is you don't need it to catch snapper. But what I've found is that 
Using burley doesn't attract any more sharks than you'd normally get. And if you do use it, you tend to catch more and bigger snapper, which is obviously what we all want to do. So the question I got was, if I'm fishing in say 50 meters, how far do I set my burley off the bottom? Luckily for the person who asked that question, I'm in 50 meters. And the question is, how far do I set the burley off the bottom? What I do is I drop my burley all the way to the bottom in 50 meters, and then I lift it up three or four, five meters, something like that. And the way I tell is I can watch it on my Garmin sonar, see my burley going down, and of course you can feel when it hits the bottom, and then give it five or six good pulls up and get it off the bottom. And that way it bounces around, it stirs up the burley, it brings in the fish, but the fish out here, particularly at the 50 meter mark, are all hard on the bottom. You'll get gurned, snapper, the odd terakee, kingfish, it's a magnificent fishery. If I'm fishing in closer to the shore, over rock structure, or I'm stray lining up in the shallows, even over sand, I'll run my burley only a couple of meters under the transom of the boat, get that nice burley trail going with the current. That way I can drift a stray line bait back down my burley trail and get a nice big snapper. But the answer to your question, when I'm at the 50 meter mark, I'm running my burley, I'd say four to five meters off the bottom. Seems to work well for me. So the next question is, what's the best bait? I don't think there is a best bait. I think bait's a personal preference. For me, if I'm doing what I'm doing today, which is ledger rig fishing and 50 meter mark, my two favorites are Southern Baits, Skipjack Tuna or Bonito. Second favorite is Southern Baits Mullet. Excellent baits. If I can catch some jack mackerel fresh on the day, they are also a supreme bait at the 50 meter mark. If I'm stray lining in closer, I really love using fresh fillets of Kawai, Southern Baits Bullet Tuna, um, again, Southern Baits Mullet. Uh, all the baits seem to work out here pretty well, but 50 meter mark, this time of year, Southern Baits Bonito. It's deadly. Anyway, better get one down here pretty soon. Southern Bait Skippy. The next question is, am I generally fishing deeper on the west coast and how do I release fish to maximize survival rates? So the first part of that question is, there's not really any hard and fast rule around what depths I'm fishing for snapper on the west coast. At the start of spring, I start somewhere around the 60 to 65 meter mark. As we get into October, I'll move in towards the 50 meter mark. And then as we get into the summer months, I'll get shallower and shallower. So we fish, fish a whole range of depths on the west, co west coast for snapper. Um, I really like soft baiting in closer in the really shallow water uh, along the coast on those really calm days. And I also love stray lining in shallow water as well. So we fish a whole range of depths on the west coast for our snapper. The second part of that question is, how do I release snapper to maximize their survival rates? There's no technique that I've found that I can use once I've got the fish and I'm releasing it. What I've found the best technique is, is if you're wanting to release fish, to bring them up really, really slowly. It's an unfortunate reality that in these depths, sort of over that 25 meter mark, you are running the risk of your fish um, suffering barotrauma and being unable to be released. So uh, to minimize catching small fish, old fish, big baits, big hooks, and try and target those larger fish. Um, once I've started catching snapper, I, I often like to run a really light setup. At the moment I'm running a small little reel, a light rod, and six kilo braid. Uh, that gives a lot of enjoyment when I'm fighting the fish, uh, and the added bonus is that it helps the fish come up nice and slow because it gets a chance to pull a bit of string on me and generally as a rule I'll find that the fish don't seem to suffer too much barotrauma and they release really nicely. If they have blown up their swim bladder, if they are showing obvious signs of severe barotrauma, the best thing is is to have your chili bin with a nice salt water ice slurry in it, keep those fish on ice, treat them with the maximum amount of respect uh, and take some quality table fish home. So the next question I got was, what depth would I fish out of Raglan for snapper in the summer months? As I get interrupted by a snapper, I think. The good thing about summer is 
there's fish spread at throughout all the depth ranges. The biggest snap I ever caught, here's a picture of it right here, just a smidge, half a pound under that magical 30 pound mark, and I caught that at the 28 metre mark, fishing just like this over summer. But it's also worth remembering you can catch fish on soft baits and nice and close, you can catch them on soft baits and jigs out a little deeper. If you're out puka fishing in that sort of under 200 meter range you'll catch snapper over summer too. It's just amazing how they spread out all over the depth ranges during summer. But I guess if I had to pick one depth I'd fish over summer it would be 25-30 meters uh, closely followed by a nice shallow water stray line session. Well there we go team, our first west coast snapper for our west coast snapper angler talk. How good. And he's come up nice and slow and he's in tip top condition. And it was caught on that Southern Baits Skipjack Tuna or Bonito that I recommended to you guys. So we'll send him home, see if we can't catch another one and answer some more of your guys' questions. And I guess, seeing as I mentioned my PB snapper, that leads me into the next question, which is, is my PB snapper from the west coast and what's my favorite lure for the wild west coast? So as you already know, my PB snapper is from the wild west coast. It was 29 and a half pounds, caught in 28 meters of water. Me and my wife, Mel, out for a leisurely Saturday summer snapper session and that bad boy came up i took a photo released him to fight another day and if i had to pick one lure for fishing the wild west coast i'd have to say bait junkie baby bass colored seven inch jerk shad is absolutely deadly up in the shallows on those west coast snapper here's a car -wai. Always a welcome bycatch on the west coast, and he's coming home for Ikimara. All right, next question is, do I prefer to use jigs or natural baits? I have to admit, try as I might, there's simply nothing that's as effective on the west coast for catching snapper as natural baits. H having said that, jigs and soft baits on their day can be absolutely deadly as well. So, I guess that's a kind of wishy-washy answer, isn't it? Natural baits certainly are the most effective way to target snapper on the west coast, but that doesn't mean you should discount jigs, sliding lures and soft baits. They're really, really fun to fish out here and they can be very effective. The only thing I will say is kawai can be prolific out here, so it can be an issue on the jigs. Having said that, kawai is a great sport fish to catch and over the winter months, just be careful if you're catching barracuda, they do take a bit of a fancy to shiny things. All right, next question. One of you guys wanted to know, do I prefer to anchor or drift out here? And the simple answer is, I prefer to anchor. It's no secret that the west coast is a bit of a weather magnet. The prevailing weather in New Zealand is a southwesterly flow, and most of the time, especially if you're fishing in deeper water, you're gonna to wanna to be anchored because your drift is just gonna be so fast, it's gonna be uncomfortable, your lines are gonna end up dragging way behind you, you'll get all sorts of tangles, and generally won't have much fun, which is what we're out here doing. So, the simple answer is anchoring. On the odd occasion, I'll drift. When I'm soft baiting, I'll use my Mincota. When I'm poker fishing, I'll use my Mincota or drift. But for snapper fishing, which is what we're talking about, on this angler talk, I will anchor. And there's another little west coast snapper. How good, doing a Daiwa angler talk, talking about west coast snapper whilst catching west coast snapper. Doesn't get any better than that, does it? The next question is, what soft bait colors are working, what Daiwa bait junkie colours are working. You've already heard me mention the baby bass colour. I really like natural bait junkie colours on the west coast. My top three would be baby bass, wakasagi and camo. And as you can see from this footage here, we've been having some great soft bait fishing on the west coast. When it's on, it's on. It's as good as anywhere. I love it. Oh, 
help. This is the one. Oh. Man, that was a bite and a half. <laughs> How good. Shaking his head a lot. How was that first run straight off the bite? So epic. The baby bass. <laughs> and there you go. Can't catch snapper on the west coast on soft baits, they tell me. Turns out you can. And there we go. Another nice little west coast snapper for our west coast snapper angler talk. One of you guys asked what is the best Daiwa rod and reel combo for fishing out west. Now I mentioned that I like fishing with light gear, maximizes the fun and means I could bring the fish up nice and slowly, but it's not really what it was designed for if I'm perfectly honest. If I had to pick one combo that I'd recommend for fishing the wild west coast, it would be this timeless classic. The Daiwa Sea Line SL30 paired with the Daiwa VIP saltwater rod. This combo has stood the test of time. It's an absolute classic. It's perfect for doing what I'm doing now, dropping big baits down in 50 meters and catching big snapper. It's also my go-to stray line combo. It's awesome for live baiting. I've caught nice big kingfish on it. It's a versatile, go anywhere, do anything combo. And if I had to pick my one setup for the wild west coast, this would be it. Hopefully I can put it to work now. The fishing's kind of slow. Caught a few snapper. Got a couple that got gut hooked, even on eight burrow hooks that are in the Yeti for tea. But I reckon it's about time to try and catch a big one. See how we go. I'm finding the fish have been camera shy lately. Kind of a pain. There we go. Sea lion doing what it does best. Oh, this feels like quite a good fish too. Oh, it's a good combo. This one's spooled with 30 pound monos so I can use it for stray lining, which gives a lot of stretch in these deep waters, but it's awesome to use. Jeez, this feels like a good fish. I'm telling you, it's a workhorse, man. Hope I can stay connected. Here we go. The Sea Line 30 Daiwa VIP combo doing exactly what it loves to do best catch hard fighting west coast snapper and that there is a beauty so there you go you wanted to know what the best Daiwa combo was for catching hard fighting west coast snapper there's a hard fighting west coast snapper and there's the combo the Daiwa sea line sl30 paired with the Daiwa VIP saltwater rod. It's a classic, it's a workhorse. That's the one I'd recommend. It's a perfect eating fish. I'll get him in our ice slurry, catch another one. So I've kept two in my bin so far, and I think that's probably enough for tonight. So I'll bring this one up nice and slowly and release it. As long as it hasn't been gut hooked and isn't showing any barotrauma. And I'll, while I'm winding him in nice and slow, I'll move on to the next question, which is a lot of you guys asked about sliders, small micro jigs, slow pitch jigs, and whether or not they worked on the West Coast. And as you would have heard me allude to in some of my other answers, they can work really, really well out here. You do catch a lot of kawai on them. The kawai are quite prolific out here, but on their day, they're absolutely awesome. So I'll tell you what, I'll bring up this snapper nice and slowly, I can see him here, and then we'll chuck on a little Daiwa Koga, and we'll talk about some of my favorite colors, and we'll see if we can't catch us a snapper. So there we go. Slowly brought up, showing, showing no signs of barotrauma, and he'll release healthy and happy. And that is a good example of the way I catch a fish to maximize its chance of successful release and survival after release and that was a big shark jesus all right i've rigged up a little tungsten slow pitch jig you want to know if they work out here they do work i'm seeing a lot of midwater sign which i suspect is either kawai or jack mackerel i've been catching a few kawai today i haven't put the jig down yet i'm going to do that just for you guys you ask for color recommendations 
they all work great. But in the new tungsten Kogas, these are my two favorite colors, the orange and the black. We might give those a try a little later on, depending on how we go with the tungsten slow pitch jig. But this is my favorite color when it comes to the little micro jigs, that lovely blue and silver natural color. We'll drop that down. We might get an idea of what's in mid water. I'm dropping it down on my Koga rod with my Saltiga 10H. Like I say, you can catch a lot of kawaii out here doing this. The snapper do love them. We'll see if there's anything hanging around in mid water. They are really effective on jack mackerel, which can be great when you want to catch live baits. But like I say, the snapper do love them as well. We'll see how we go. And there you go. The slow pitch jig. The tungsten slow pitch jig. Doing its thing. What I have had showing up, however, as tends to happen at the start of summer, is a big old Marco starting to do laps around my boat. And he's looking a little agitated. I just released a snapper and he sparked up. He missed it, thankfully, and that just shows how happy the snapper was and how quick it was and how healthy it was. But anyway, we'll see what I've managed to snag on my tungsten slow pitch jig and hopefully Mr. Marco doesn't grab him. The way it's fighting is I suspect it's either a giant west coast mackerel or a kawai. I'm going to go with giant west coast mackerel but I'm not sure but the shark just swam into my line so we'll never know. The shark didn't even get the fish it just swam into my braid so that's a bummer. Stink! Ah well the jig worked anyway. Another one for the VIP. I'm glad one of you guys asked that question because I haven't fished with this setup for a while and it's a bloody peach. Anyway, I just had a bait taken by that Marco shark. I was dropping it down. He hadn't paid any interest in our baits, but unfortunately, once they show up and start doing that, it's generally time for me to finish the session. So hopefully that's answered a few of your guys' questions around techniques and gear and places to target West Coast Snapper. This is a magnificent fishery. It's really worth exploring. I'd recommend all you guys to get out here and give it a go. But for now, I'm gonna finish winding in the Snapper and sign off. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for tuning in to this Daiwa Angler Talk around catching these West Coast Snapper. There we go, team. Another beautiful specimen of a West Coast Snapper. He goes back, we're going home. Thanks for tuning in to this Daiwa Angler Talk, and we'll see you next time. Yahoo!